The graduates we celebrate today stand on the shoulders of Des Moines University alumni who built a strong foundation of academic integrity and professional commitment that has benefited patients, healthcare centers, and, academic, and our academic community throughout their years of service. Please stand as we welcome alumni representatives for the 50 plus, 50, 40, and 25 year anniversary classes back to their alma mater. Serving as Grand Marshal for the ceremony today is Dr. Norman Rose, a member of the class of 1963. Dr. Rose is extremely passionate about his alma mater and it ex has expressed his gratitude to the university as a generous donor. Thank you for serving as our Grand Marshal today. Des Moines University is also very proud of the Alumni Association, which seeks to promote the welfare of the university to increase the connection that exists between the university and its alumni, and to prepare the institution for service to the state and nation in the decades to come. Following our alumni, our honored alumni are two distinguished members of the faculty who were recently awarded faculty emeritus status. The designation of emeritus faculty is reserved for those retiring from the university with more than 20 years of service and a record of significant contributions to the academic service and scholarly pursuits of Des Moines University. Ms. Pamela Chambers joined DMU in 1987 as a nurse in the family practice clinic. She later received her physician assistant degree and master's in public health, and was named an instructor for the physician assistant program in 1994. Ms. Chambers then served as assistant professor, admissions coordinator, and assistant program director. She was appointed associate professor in 2004, served as clinical outcomes coordinator, and then added the role of Director of Clinical Education in 2016. Ms. Chambers also served as member and president of both the College of Health Sciences Alumni Council and the DMU Alumni Association Board of Directors. For her service and leadership, she was named to the, the college's Alumna of the Year in 2011. Mr. Dan Chambers joined DMU in 1987 as an adjunct instructor in the physician assistant program and as a primary care provider at a rural university clinic. In 1988, he became recruiting and admissions coordinator and clinical coordinator for the PA program while also providing care in the DMU clinic. He was named assistant professor in 1993 and co-curriculum coordinator in 1997. In the early 2000s, when the physician assistant program transitioned from being a bachelor's degree to a master's degree, he designed and implemented its new curriculum. He was promoted to associate professor in 2004. Congratulations, Dan and Pam. <clears throat> And now, Des Moines University is proud to present the class of 2018.
Please be seated. As the Grand Marshal for this commencement ceremony, I am pleased to extend the greetings to all that are gathered here today. It is indeed an honor to make it known that Des Moines University will award degrees to our graduates in the College of Health Sciences, College of Podiatry, Podiatric Medicine and Surgery, and the College of Osteopathic Medicine. This ceremony, the 108th in the history of Des Moines University, continues a rich academic tradition that began in 1899, when the first class of eight received their degrees. Today, this university will proudly award 455 degrees, representing its three colleges and nine academic programs. I am now honored, pleased, and humbled, and it is my privilege to welcome to the podium our president, Dr. Angela L. Walker Franklin, who serves as the presiding official at this ceremony of commencement. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rose, and welcome to everyone gathered here today to pay tribute to this great nation for the many freedoms we enjoy. Will the audience please rise for the national anthem? We are pleased that Allison Smith, a member of the class of 2018 in the College of Osteopathic Medicine, will lead us in singing our anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous Fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Thank you, Allison. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection and gratitude for our many blessings. Please be seated. Members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished faculty, graduates, alumni, family members, and friends, welcome to the 118th commencement ceremony for Des Moines University. This is an exciting day for all of us. It is a day when our students fulfill the promise that began with their acceptance to Des Moines University and culminates today with the awarding of a professional degree. 
Graduates, I invite you to look at this vast audience gathered here to celebrate your accomplishments. Enjoy your day. This is also a day of celebration for all associated with Des Moines University. Throughout its history, this institution has conferred more than 17,000 degrees, providing graduates with the knowledge and training to improve the health and wellness of individuals as well as entire communities. While one can barely imagine the changes that will become part of the healthcare landscape in the next 10 to 25 years, our graduates are superbly prepared with outstanding training, a heritage based in humanistic care, and a commitment to listen, engage, and collaborate in the many settings that provide or impact healthcare today. Graduates, during your time at Des Moines University, you have indeed changed our world. You have inspired us with your service to the underserved, as demonstrated in the homeless community outreach. You have defined us with your charitable efforts, including the St. Baldrick's Day fundraiser for pediatric cancer research and the juvenile diabetes walk. You have challenged us with your commitment to make this university the best it can be, as demonstrated by your interprofessional relationships research projects, student government, and club leadership, and your commitment to the value of inclusiveness and cultural sensitivity. Your ability to change the world is a result of the effort of a very special group gathered before us in the audience. Graduations could never occur were it not for the dedicated efforts of our faculty, scholars, researchers, advisors, and mentors who have contributed immensely to your education and to the enhancement of the healthcare professions you represent. We're pleased to also welcome back to their alma mater our distinguished alumni, whose work and accomplishments have provided a strong heritage and foundation for those of you who graduate today. We are particularly pleased to include Dr. Norman Rose, a member of the class of 1963 of the College of Osteopathic Medicine who is serving as our Grand Marshal today. For our reunion celebrations, special guests are alumni in the classes of 1993, 1978, 1968, and earlier years, who very joyfully led the processional for our ceremony today, wearing silver and gold ceremonial stoles. Last evening, the 25, 40, 50, and 50 plus anniversary alumni were honored with a medallion to symbolize their ongoing connection to their alma mater. To all alumni, we thank you proud, for proudly continuing the tradition of compassionate healthcare delivery that is the hallmark of our institution. We also want to recognize those alumni who serve America in the military by providing medical care for all who protect America's freedoms at home and on foreign shores. And we extend thanks to all veterans and active duty servicemen and women attending our ceremony today. On the stage are members of the Board of Trustees who have wisely governed the course of Des Moines University and ensured that our historic mission has been preserved and strengthened to the position of preeminence that we enjoy today. Members of the Board of Trustees and Emeritus Board members, will you please stand and be recognized. Thank you. It is now my pleasure to invite the Chairman of the Board of Trustees, Mr. Steve Moraine, to deliver greetings to our graduates and guests. Good morning. I wish you all could see how good you all look today. As guardians of the university's mission and academic excellence, the members of the Board of Trustees are delighted to extend greetings to all gathered here today. We're extremely proud to recognize these talented graduates and to extend our congratulations to them 
as well as to the faculty. We applaud each and every one of you and wish you a successful future dedicated to the care of your patients and populations. We're also pleased to, to recognize and congratulate the alumni who are here today to celebrate the anniversary of their graduation and to reflect on the careers dedicated to serving the needs of their patients and communities. Our very best wishes to each of you. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moraine. On behalf of the faculty and all others in the community we proudly call Des Moines University, I extend thanks to the families and friends who have joined us to celebrate the individual and collective achievements of the graduates and to the class of 2018. As you celebrate the completion of a major milestone in your educational journey, Des Moines University is so proud to recognize you as accomplished professionals. May you enjoy for many years the rewards that come to those who serve others. I'm now pleased and honored to introduce our commencement speaker. At Des Moines University, we value people who think big, aim high, and go deep to achieve their dreams and serve others. Dr. J.D. Polk epitomizes these qualities. As the first doctor of osteopathic medicine to serve as chief health and medical officer of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, Dr. Polk oversees the medical needs of NASA astronauts and the health of agency employees. He is a leader in managing the technical aspects of all things medical on NASA's space vehicles, from how they are built to the astronauts' food and water needs during missions. He plays a key role in medically related research that NASA performs, the topics of which range from vaccinations to viruses to genetics. And he's part of the NASA team working on the first ever human journey to Mars. Earlier in his career, Dr. Polk was Chief of Space Medicine for NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. In that role, he served on a four-member team that in 2010 traveled to Chile to help rescue 33 men trapped in a copper mine approximately 2,300 feet underground. The team members applied their knowledge about life and space to this dire situation. They also suggested design requirements to the Chilean government for the innovative rescue capsule that ultimately saved the lives of all 33 miners who had spent more than two months underground. Dr. Polk's illustrious career has included serving as the Acting Assistant Secretary for Health Affairs and Chief Medical Officer of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security as a State Emergency Medi Medical Services Medical Director for the State of Ohio and Chief of Metro Life Flight in Cleveland. I am most grateful, however, that he also served as Dean of our College of Osteopathic Medicine before he assumed his current role at NASA, and I'm delighted to welcome him back to DMU and Des Moines. Dr. Polk is well published in the fields of emergency medicine, disaster medicine, space medicine, and medical management. A clinical associate professor of emergency medicine at the Edward Via, Via College of Osteopathic Medicine, he is board certified in both emergency medicine and aerospace medicine. In addition to the DO degree he earned at A.T. Steele University in Missouri, he holds a master of science degree in space studies from the American Military University, a master's in medical management from the University of Southern California's Marshall School of Business, and a master's certificate in public health from the University of New England, a fellow of the American College of Osteopathic Emergency Physicians and the Aerospace Medicine Association. Dr. Polk has received numerous awards and commendations, including citations from the FBI, White House Medical Unit, and the U.S. Air Force as well as a NASA Center Director's Commendation, National Exceptional Service and Exceptional Achievement Medals, and the National Security and International Affairs Medal. Dr. Polk, 
it is my distinct honor to invite you to the podium to deliver the commencement address for Des Moines University's class of 2018. Dr. Polk. Dr. Franklin, I don't think I've seen this many students in one auditorium since a Butts and Seats Board Review. Dr. Franklin, esteemed members of the Board of Trustees, outstanding faculty and staff, Dean Cahalan, Dean Yoho, Dean Ripley, I like the sound of that, by the way, family, friends, and last but not least, honored graduates. It is an immense pleasure to be here with you all today. This graduating class is especially important to me as I was the, this is the first class that I actually uh, interviewed and, and brought into the uh, College of Osteopathic Medicine as dean. So I'm very thankful to, for Dr., to Dr. Franklin for allowing me this great honor of seeing you all graduate. I feel a kinship not only to the DO class, but also to each of the colleges. We work closely with Dean Yoho and Dean Kahalen to incorporate ultrasound, into the curriculum and work closely on expanding the clinical rotations among each of the universities uh, as one university. But my most important contribution and, co and collaboration effort between the other two colleges was convincing them to join me on the dunking machine for the dunk the dean uh, activity at the start of the school year. I think they both are eternally grateful to Dr. Ripley that uh, he is starting new traditions. I had planned to be at the university for a much longer time. Uh, board scores were on the steep slope. Uh, first time pass rate was on a steep slope. Uh, we had just hired 14 outstanding faculty. With the tireless work of Dr. Gray and the faculty, uh, research was up 70%. I felt like we were just hitting our stride. Residency match rate was 100%. Uh, ultrasound was just being put into place. And then NASA called. And NASA asked if I wouldn't mind returning to do the human systems integration for exploration missions for the moon and Mars. And I talked to Dr. Franklin that it felt like I was leaving a painting unfinished, you know, the canvas only about half full. And there was also a chance that I could become the chief medical officer of the entire space agency. No DO had ever done that before. Dr. Franklin told me I had to go for it. She said, I had to keep blazing a trail for those behind me. And Dr. Franklin knows a thing or two about blazing trails and has done so as well many times in the areas as president of DMU. So I have the great honor and privilege of being the chief health and medical officer to the nation's space program. It's a daunting task and position, but one in which I am privileged to serve. Not many people get to be Dr. McCoy at Starfleet. So Dr. Franklin, I thank you for your encouragement to take the risk, but also for allowing me the outstanding privilege of finishing this canvas and seeing this awesome class graduate. On a personal level, it's also good to see the College of Medicine in Dr. Ripley's capable hands. So with undue haste, let me pass on my seven traits that I have given residents and students in healthcare for many years. Occasionally, the current events uh, change the stories a little bit or the backstory, but they pretty much remain the same. So here it goes. Number one, be your best self, or be prepared to do some, as Desi Arnaz used to say, explaining. The Greeks called this virtue fortitude, courage, resilience, patience, perseverance, endurance, a healthy self-confidence are all aspects of fortitude. But I think fortitude is that inner voice that tells you to be your best self, to do the right thing, even when it's tempting not to. I had a former student, now a resident, lamenting to me by email recently that he had gotten a little hot water with the residency program director for something he had posted on social media. And he explained in his email that he felt that this was unfair, that you know this was his personal opinion and he's entitled to his personal opinion. And just because he was a healthcare professional, it should not interfere with his ability to have his opinion on politics or events of the day. He wanted to know my thoughts. I told him that if I post anything for the public, it has to be something that I wouldn't be embarrassed reading about on the cover of the Washington Post. It also has to be something positive. 
because I feel we have a responsibility of, of, as healthcare providers to keep lifting our patients up and people in general up. It's easy to be negative. It's easy to roll in the mud with the pigs, but it's harder to stay on the high road. But realize and embrace the expectations that we have, as healthcare providers have and are held to. There are times we must put aside our personal feelings, our biases, and act not as healthcare providers, but as people but we must also, as healthcare providers, keep lifting people up. We have to go the extra mile for patients. There's a quote I like by Roger Staubach that says, there are no traffic jams on the extra mile. He's right. Or the quote by Joyce Meyer that states, you cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. So be the positive mind. Be your best self. Society expects that you as a healthcare provi provider will be unbiased, without bigotry, without prejudice, and free from sexist opinions. You are expected to give the same care and empathy to the liberal and the conservative, the red and the blue, to every gender, every religion, and give the same care to the villain as you would to the victims. Fair or not, you are held to a higher moral and societal standard than most professions. So here's my advice. Embrace it. Don't lament that society expects this of you Embrace it. Have the fortitude, the self-control, the integrity, and hold yourself accountable. Be the positive light and beacon for your patients. You know, at, at NASA, we still track the Voyager 1 spacecraft. It's left our solar system some time ago. But before it left the galaxy, and it is the farthest you know, man-made object right now in the galaxy. Before it left the galaxy, we commanded it to turn back and take a picture of Earth. And this picture, you can Google it, it's called the pale blue dot. Earth looks like a tiny speck of dust in this vast sea and universe. You can barely make out this small pale blue dot. It makes you realize how small and insignificant this planet is in the vast array of the universe. But it also lends perspective that all the petty things that divide us here on this planet, all the things that get tweeted about and make headlines are meaningless from that distance. As healthcare providers, you also need to let those things go. You cannot control everything that will happen in your life or control the insolence of some people or politics or whether a disease or accident or some other fate will befall you, but you can control how you respond or how you react to things. And your reaction and your response makes a difference in your long-term happiness. Be your best self. Number two, find your passion. Find what makes the inner portion of your very soul burn. There are always competing priorities. There are times when the elderly parent or your child will take precedence. There are times when you must spend time on your marriage or your relationship. There are times when you spend the night in the ICU trying desperately to save a patient. And there will be times when those things all conflict. And you have to make a very difficult choice as to which ones you will do. In order to deal with the stress of events of life, keep the flame of passion alive in your life, be it sports, music, art, faith, family, traveling, something that keeps you alive and that you are passionate about. Follow your passion and keep it lit. Evolve, grow, keep reshaping your life. Your, your passions will change over time. In the beginning of your career, your interests may change. You might like Eminem's music today, but you may not like Eminem when you're 50. Foo Fighters, well, that's a bad example. You'll always love Foo Fighters. Don't stop learning. You may want to go back and get another degree. I know that's probably not something you want me to tell you today. You may want to go back and change from the rapid action of the emergency department to the suburbs to spend more time with family. You may want to explore a new skill, a new hobby. You may want to leave clinical care altogether at some point and get involved with academia or management. Give yourself permission to change your mind, to grow and to evolve. Be willing to take the leap for those things that you're passionate about. Is it risky? Yes, that's why they call it a leap and not a gingerly skip. It's a new beginning for you today. This is not the end of your journey. This is a new beginning. Don't wait for fate to deliver your life to you. Make your life happen. There's a quote from a comedian, Milton Berle, you all don't know who that is, but your parents do. If opportunity doesn't knock, build a door.
But there's also an old Polish proverb, when opportunity is knocking at the door, it's best not to be in the backyard looking for four-leaf clovers. What that means is don't wait for fate to deliver your life to you and rely on luck or chance. Chase your dreams and chase your passions. Follow your passion and most importantly, give yourself permission to change over time. Number three, everything happens for a reason. There is no experience in your life that does not somehow come into play. You will learn more and be reshaped by adversity than you will from your successes. I remember when I was a medical student and we were having to learn lipids and how to calculate the RQ and metabolic rates of fats and proteins and lipids. And I thought to myself, I'm gonna be an ER doc. I will never need this, ever, ever. And then as a resident, I was rotating in the ICU at St. Luke's Medical Center and I was the guy having to do all the total parenteral nutrition orders for the intubated patients. For you parents out there, that's the uh, intravenous nutrition for each patient. They had not installed computers yet in the ICU. I know, that's scary, isn't it? This was probably the days before EMRs and before the wheel. And I had to calculate the Harris-Benedict equations and the metabolic rates for each of the patients by hand for all of their lipids, protein, carbohydrate, fat, potassium, phosphate, thiamine, on eight ICU patients every morning. And the attending there, the ICU attending, could see my overt joy in the fact that I had to do this every morning as a resident. And the attending looked at me and said, Polk, you seem to be having a lot of fun at this. Why don't you go ahead and do this on all the ICU patients every morning for the rest of the month? It'll be good practice. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm not gonna tell you what I really thought to myself. <laughs> but I thought, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. I'm gonna be an ER doc. I am never going to need this. Yet here I am calculating all this stuff by hand on all these patients for the next 25 days. This is pure punishment. Fast forward 20 years. I'm the chief of space medicine at NASA and the Chilean ambassador comes across to NASA to ask for our help saving 33 Chilean miners that are trapped in a mine. The miners are starving, the clinicians would have to refeed them, but they would have to do so correctly to avoid refeeding syndrome and the heart failure and dysrhythmias that would occur as a result. I flew down to the mine and there I was, calculating the Harris-Benedict equation on each of the 33 miners to calculate their metabolic needs, their lipids, their protein, the carbs, the potassium, the phosphorus, the thiamine, the glucose on each of the 33 miners. One of my colleagues said, dude, yeah, colloquial dude, dude, how is it you know how to calculate the RQ and metabolic and caloric needs by hand? And I replied, well, evidently somebody knew I was going to need this at some point in the future and made sure to pound it into me. Not a single miner had refeeding syndrome or a single dysrhythmia and all of them got out alive. Everything happens for a reason. Everything you have learned, even the lessons you learn begrudgingly, plays some role in the scenes or acts of the play that is your life. Everything happens for a reason. Number four, be confident, but more importantly, be wise. Be confident because you've received excellent training here at DMU. Confidence and arrogance are not the same thing, mind you. I remember the first time when I was the Deputy Assistant Secretary at Homeland Security, and I was going into my first meeting in the Situation Room of the White House. I was scared to death, and I thought to myself on the way into the White House, I thought, please God, Please, God, don't let them figure out that I'm not smart enough to be here and I don't know what I'm talking about. As I sat in the meeting, after listening for about 20 minutes, it changed. And I thought, please, God, please, God, don't let me be the smartest person in the room on this subject. <laughs> I should have had the confidence that I was well trained and could do the job. And, but I was wise enough to sit and listen and know when to speak. Know your stuff. Trust me, I'm a rocket scientist. You are well-trained, be confident. But don't confuse confidence and arrogance. 
the engineer scientists at NASA are confident they can complete the mission, but they are not so arrogant as to dismiss the risks. Spaceflight is a very dangerous business, and the risk of death is ever present, much like in healthcare. Be confident but not arrogant, endeavor to be wise. Wisdom is the assimilation of knowledge, experience, maturity. Wisdom tells us when to act and how to act. Confidence gives us the ability to act. Be confident but endeavor to be wise. Number five, have humility. Care about your people. Respect the role that everyone plays. There's a well-repeated story that back in 1968, Life Magazine was doing a story on the Apollo program, and the reporter noticed a man with a NASA logo on his shirt in the lobby of Mission Control. He asked the man, what do you do here? To which the man replied, I put people on the moon. Later in the day, he noticed the man emptying trash cans and sweeping the floors in Mission Control. The reporter kind of chuckled to himself and asked one of the flight controllers in Mission Control, why does the janitor think that he helps put people on the moon? The flight controller responded matter-of-factly, that's Henry. He does help put people on the moon. Everyone here does. If Henry doesn't do his job, then mission control is a mess, and we can't do our jobs. And if we can't do our jobs, the astronauts can't do their jobs. So yes, Henry helps put people on the moon. You see, from the top of management at NASA, every single person was told that what they did, what their job entailed, contributed to the mission. Not only were they told that, but everyone believed it. And that culture is still pervasive, and it still happens at NASA. It's one of the reasons I enjoy working there. It's probably one of the reasons that NASA was voted one of the best places to work in the federal government six years running. Each person has a part to play. At the hospital, there is someone who is cleaning the patient rooms right now. If that did not happen, those rooms would be laden with bacteria, trash, dirt, grime, and the patients would be prone to infection. The housekeeping staff may also interact with the patient. They may move the call button closer so that they can reach it. They may refill their water pitcher. Those things mean something to the patient and their overall view of their care at that hospital. Everyone, and I do mean everyone, has an important role in the care of the patient. So as a healthcare provider, you need to show that kind of respect for everyone in their role. Learn their names. They have a role to play. The role is important. They know when they're viewed with respect. They will go out of their way to help you if they know that you respect them. You are highly educated, you have a role to play. But you must function as a team to execute the mission. Respect everyone on the team. Everyone is working to get the patient well, just like everyone was working to put a man on the moon. Care about your people and respect the role that everyone plays because how they treat people comes back to you. Number six, be decisive. Gather data, gather evidence, but then make a decision. Don't be paralyzed by fear. The road of life is paved with many flat squirrels that were unable to make a decision. I've seen many physicians, PAs, PTs, MHAs, scientists, and DPMs, and executives fail in leadership and their careers because they became paralyzed by fear and unable to make a decision. Be decisive. Number seven, and the final suggestion, is love what you do. Love what you do and be grateful that you have been afforded the opportunity to serve in this calling of medicine. Ladies and gentlemen, faculty and staff, honorable members of the board, Madam President, it's been an honor and a great privilege to be here today and to see this totally awesome class graduate. I'm extremely proud of all of you. I've followed your exploits, watched you evolve from fresh face interviewees who had just bought your first suit, very uncomfortable in it, interviewing, and watched you evolve into outstanding clinicians. I know the obstacles that you have had to overcome and the hours that you have spent learning your craft. I'm extremely proud that you have picked this university to go with, the journey, go with you on the journey. I expect to hear from many of you as you continue your training and enjoy great success in your careers. Thank you for allowing me to play a small part in that journey. Godspeed.
Dr. Polk and Mr. Moraine, will you please join me at the podium? Dr. J.D. Polk's expertise, hard work, and service have had an impact that is out of this world, literally. As an emergency physician, he has saved lives of people on Earth. As NASA's chief health and medical officer, he has worked to ensure the health and safety of our astronauts on land and in space. At a time when NASA is conducting an unprecedented array of missions on Earth and across the universe, he demonstrates the vital role that space exploration play in discovering new scientific knowledge and improving medicine. He also has exceptionally represented and advocated for osteopathic medicine as the first DO to serve in his role at NASA and throughout his career. Dr. Polk strives to discover and share knowledge in his roles at NASA, in his published works, and in teaching future healthcare professionals. His impact on Des Moines University and the College of Osteopathic Medicine endures. From the high academic standards he set for our students to his leadership in bringing ultrasound to our campus. In all his endeavors, Dr. Polk inspires us to aim for the stars. He inspires us to understand that as we learn more about our planet and the universe around us, we learn more about ourselves. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Des Moines University and by the state of Iowa, I do hereby confer upon J.D. Polk the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa, of which this citation will be a witness forever. Good morning. I am Dr. Rodica Akins, Provost at Des Moines University, and it is my honor to begin the official rite of graduation. The deans will now present their graduating classes in preparation for the awarding of the degrees. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Jody Cahalan, Dean of the College of Health Sciences. Thank you and good morning. Will the graduates from the College of Health Sciences, the Healthcare Administration Program, the Public Health Program, the Physician Assistant Program, the Post-Professional Doctor in Physical Therapy Program, and the Doctor in Physical Therapy program, please stand. The members of the faculty of the College of Health Sciences have evaluated the candidates and endorse all of these students as worthy of having the degree Master of Healthcare Administration, Master of Public Health, Master of Science in Physician Assistant Studies, or Doctor of Physical Therapy conferred on them. It is with great pride that I present the class of 2018 from the College of Health Sciences. You may be seated. Good morning. I'm uh, Tim Yoho. I'm the Dean of the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery. 
Will those graduates from the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery please stand? President Franklin, members of the Board of Trustees, honored guests, family, and friends of the graduates. On behalf of the faculty, I present the 2018 graduating class of the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery. The faculty members of the college have evaluated the candidates and endorsed each of these individuals as worthy of having the degree Doctor of Podiatric Medicine conferred upon them. President Franklin, it is my pleasure to present the class of 2018 of the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery and the newest members of the podiatric medical profession. Please be seated. Will the graduates from the College of Osteopathic Medicine please stand? <laughs> President Franklin, members of the Board of Trustees, honored guests, on behalf of the faculty, I present to you the 2018 graduating class from the College of Osteopathic Medicine. The members of the faculty of the College of Osteopathic Medicine have evaluated the candidates and endorse all of these students as worthy of having the degree of Master of Science in Anatomy, Master of Science in Biomedical Sciences, Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine conferred upon them. President Franklin, it is with great pride that I present the class of 2018 College of Osteopathic Medicine. Please be seated. Once again, it is my pleasure to call our president, Dr. Angela Franklin, to the podium for the conferring of degrees. Will all the graduates please stand? I am pleased to receive these candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of this university and by the state of Iowa, I do hereby confer upon you the degree for which you have been endorsed with all of the honors, rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining to this degree, of which your diploma will be a witness forever you are hereby recognized as graduates and alumni of Des Moines University. Congratulations. You may be seated. We will now recognize the degree recipients individually with the procession of the graduates. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Jason Cook, Assistant Professor in the Physical Therapy Program, who will announce the names of the graduates for the College of Health Sciences. We will begin the recognition for the graduates in the Healthcare Administration Program who have earned a Master's of Healthcare Administration degree. Kaylin Jo Barton. Megan Michelle Bernholtz. Lindsay Best. Allison Elizabeth Bokey. Olga Carpenter also receiving Master of Public Health degree. Kimberly Flores. Amanda K. Huffman. Matthew Kyle Ingram. 
Ashley Marie Miller. Jesse R. Murphy. Kenneth Lewis Ratliff. Carter Lou Roberts. Elijah Macaria Ruiru. Jessica C. Schaefer. Sarah Elizabeth Walton. Des Moines University now recognizes those graduates who earned the Master of Public Health degree. James Tyler Adams. Christina Eileen Billings. John William Bott. Courtly, Courtney Renee Cheatham. Ashley Dahl. Andrew John Minear. Ryan Michael Steppen. It is now my pleasure to welcome to the platform the graduates of the Physician Assistance Program who are receiving the Master's of Science degree in Physician Assistance Studies. Esther Arazola. Andrea Marie Averi. Andrea Renee Bavallo. Anna Ray Bohm. Sarah Romo Brock. Jacqueline Mary Colwerts. Molly Celine Calhoun. Michaela Elliott. Lindsay Feekner. Brian Robert Foster. Misiel Garcia. Lisa Ann Hanna. Alyssa Heathman. Caitlin E. Hennings. Susan E. Hare. Benjamin E. Hodges. Sarah Nicole Hudson. Gregory Isaacson. Grant Jansen. Morgan Youngman. Jenny Cam. Amanda Kukta. Benjamin Lehrer. Stacy Lester. Kelly Jean Mahoney. Jill Marie Maliski. Spencer Joseph Marsden. Michael McClellan. Cassandra Menke.
Mary Jane Mills. Taylor Murray. Andrea Nicole Ullman. Katie Ann Parsons. Carrie Lynn Patton. Kelsey Peterson. Jessica Reyes, graduate with distinction. Abigail Lynn Schiltz. Benjamin Schroeder. Amanda Marie Sieb. Bailey K. Slack. Cassandra Slaymaker. Brian Todd Spencer. Monica Ellen Stasi. Mackenzie Jean Stick. Rachel Teese. Brittany Tucker. The physician assistant oath will be administered by Ms. Pam Harrison Chambers, Director of Clinical Education, and Mr. Dan Chambers, Associate Professor in the Physician Assistant Program. Will the graduates please stand? If there are other physician assistants in the audience, please stand as well and take the pledge with us. Let's read together. I pledge, pledge to, to perform, perform the following duties with honesty and dedication. I will hold as my primary responsibility the health, safety, welfare, and dignity of all human beings. I will uphold the tenets of patient autonomy, beneficence, non-malfeasance, and justice. I will recognize and promote the value of diversity. I will treat equally all persons who seek my care. I will hold in confidence the information shared in the course of practicing medicine. I will assess my personal capabilities and limitations, striving always to improve my medical practice. I will actively seek to expand my knowledge and skills, keeping abreast of advances in medicine. I will work with other members of the healthcare team to provide compassionate and effective care of patients. I will use my knowledge and experience to contribute to an improved community. I will respect my professional relationship with the physician. I will share and expand knowledge within my profession. 
These duties are pledged with sincerity and upon my honor. Congratulations to the PA class of 2018. You can be seated. Des Moines University offers the Doctor of Physical Therapy degree through an on-campus Doctor of Physical Therapy program and through an online post-professional program. We will first recognize the graduates of the Doctor of Physical Therapy program. Hooding the graduates are Dr. Tracy Porter, Assistant Director of Clinical Education, and Dr. Kristen Lowry, Assistant Professor in the Physical Therapy Department. Dr. John Alonzo Abode. Dr. Andrew Michael Allen. Dr. Blake Ossenhus. Dr. Mackenzie Joe Banwert. Dr. Jenna Michelle Berg. Dr. Kaylin Charlotte Bland. Dr. Connor Blythe. Dr. Courtney L. Burrow. Dr. Laura Nicole Burton. Dr. Kelsey Church. Dr. Brian Stephen Sikon. Dr. Desiree Marie Collins. Dr. Brittany Colmore. Dr. Amelia Dahlhauser. Dr. Denise Davis. Dr. Samuel Richard James DeBauer. Dr. Molly McElroy Friedman, hooded by Dr. James Rainier. Dr. Alicia Christine Hand. Dr. Lucas Hadervig. Dr. Eric Held. Dr. Emily Hildebrandt. Dr. Jennifer Hill. Dr. Allison Holsworth. Dr. Haley D. Huey. Dr. Jennifer Johnson. Applause 
Dr. Paula Rose Kellur. Dr. Marianne Adele Kraus. Dr. Kayla Marie Kyle. Dr. Daniel Larson. Dr. Rachel Mabry. Dr. Abby Mathis. Dr. Lindsay Nicole McDaniels. Dr. Melissa M. McGinnis. Dr. Haley Meyer. Dr. Michael Allen Murphy. Dr. Noelle Grace Murray. Dr. Ashley Nelson Brettel. Dr. Amy Odendahl. Dr. David Parr. Dr. Trevor Michael Parrish. Dr. Ashley Morgan Pearson. Dr. Lindsay Peters. Dr. Kelsey Phelan. Dr. Kelsey Diana Rempe. Dr. Elaine Ashley Rodriguez. Dr. Laura Rose Chesso. Dr. Tara Lee Selvi. Dr. Laura Steichen. Dr. Alex Taylor Stein, hooded by Margaret Negretti. Dr. Jessica Stickel. Dr. Matthew Albert Tejito. Dr. Alyssa M. Williamson. Dr. Brooke Lynn Wittry. We will now recognize the graduates who are awarded the Doctor of Physical Therapy degree through the Post-Professional Doctor of Physical Therapy program. Hooding the graduates are Dr. Katherine Stevermer, Associate Professor, and Juanita Robel, Assistant Professor for the Physical Therapy Department.
Dr. Cheryl Jean Border. Dr. Barbara J. Davis, graduate with distinction. Dr. E. Kristen Park. Dr. Florente Cipriano Vicente Villegas Payos. The physical therapy oath will be administered by Dr. Tracy Bush, Director of the Doctor of Physical Therapy Program for the College of Health Sciences and a member of the class of 1995. Will the graduates please rise? At this time, I would like to invite all of the physical therapists present today in the audience and on the platform to please rise and join the graduates as we recite the physical therapy oath in unison. As I practice the art of physical therapy, I will respect the rights and dignity of all individuals and will provide compassionate care. I will place the welfare of my patients and clients above my own self-interest. I will exercise sound judgment and comply with laws and regulations that govern physical therapy and protect the public from unethical, incompetent, and illegal acts. I will maintain professional competence and promote high standards for physical therapy practice, education, and research. I will address the health needs of society and strive to effect changes that benefit patients, clients, and the community. Thus, with this pledge, I freely accept the responsibilities that accompany the practice of physical therapy. Congratulations, and please be seated. I am pleased to introduce Dr. Kathy Frush, Associate Professor who will announce the names of the graduates in the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery. Hooding the graduates are Dr. James Mahoney, professor, and Dr. Yu Zhang Fong, assistant professor of pathology. We will now begin the on-stage procession for the graduates from the College of Podiatric Medicine and Surgery. Dr. Anas M. Atala. Dr. Ellen Cynthia Barton. Dr. Luke Charles Bates. Dr. Aaron J. Block. Dr. Philip C. Burton. Dr. Andrea Savaldi. Dr. Zachary A. Cohen. Dr. Alexis Gail Cox. Dr. Hannah Dobrzeleski. Dr. 
Dr. Tanner Dodson. Dr. Katie Ferraro. Dr. Brenton A. Fox. Dr. Faras Jarada. Dr. John Robert Greaves. Dr. Alexander Green. Dr. Dana Michelle Gustafson. Dr. Blake C. Hale. Dr. Taylor D. Heck. Dr. Christopher Hinn. Dr. Lindsay R. Yelm. Dr. Poulin Joshi. Dr. Rene Cezanne Giardico. Dr. Michael George Cateman. Dr. Alan J. Kempf. Dr. Trent H. Lott. Dr. Christy A. Lynch. Dr. Megan Elizabeth Martin. Dr. Bilal Master. Dr. Amir Suhail Madaria. Dr. Nathan R. Morin. Dr. Jassy McGovern. Dr. Colin Grant Messerly Sr. Dr. Joshua A. Nichols. Dr. Marissa A. Oberstadt. Dr. Brennan O'Dell. Dr. Dallin Pope, graduate with distinction. Dr. Leslie Harriet Pyle. Dr. James Michael Rainier, hooded by Dr. Molly Friedman. Dr. Erica N. Siebold. Dr. Logan Timothy Shannon.
Dr. Tyler Kenneth Sorensen. Dr. Nicole M. Spile. Dr. Micah Y. Spencer. Dr. Nicholas Staub. Dr. Renee Elizabeth T. Garden. Dr. John Tran. Dr. Joshua Wolf, also receiving Master of Healthcare Administration. The pediatric oath will be administered by Dr. Kevin Smith, Associate Dean for Clinical Affairs in the College of Pediatric Medicine and Surgery and a member of the CPMS class of 1995. Will the graduate please stand? I would like to invite all podiatric physicians in the audience and on the platform to join the graduates in reciting the podiatric oath in unison with me. Upon my honor, I declare that I will accept the moral and legal responsibilities which become mine as a member of the podiatric medical profession. Those talents with which I may have been endowed will be devoted to aid those who may choose to entrust themselves to my judgment and care. I will abstain from all intentional harm and wrongdoing to my fellow citizens, especially from abusing the soul or the body of those who entrust themselves to my professional care. In all good faith, I will support my profession and do what I may to advance its best interests, even at the sacrifice of my personal advantages. In serving my patients, I will administer to their needs in a professional manner to the best of my ability. In all instances, I will do that which will reflect credit and honor on this my chosen professions. Please be seated. <clears throat> I would like now to introduce Dr. Sarah Clayton, Assistant Professor in Physiology and Pharmacology, and Dr. Paul Walker, Assistant Professor in Family Medicine, who will announce the graduates in the College of Osteopathic Medicine. We will now honor the graduates of the College of Osteopathic Medicine who were earned the Master of Science in Biomedical Sciences degree. Heather Marie Banker. Elizabeth Christine DeForest. Dakota Ann Nurland. Graduate with distinction. We will now honor the graduates of the College of Osteopathic Medicine, earning the Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine degree. 
Hooding the graduates are Dr. Rebecca Shaw, Assistant Professor and Chair of Specialty Medicine, Dr. Mohamed Spachter, Associate Professor of Anatomy, Dr. Sarah Werning, Assistant Professor of Anatomy, and Dr. Adrian Woolley, Assistant Professor of Osteopathic Manual Medicine. Dr. Ahmad Amir Abdul Halim. Dr. Jessica E. Ambrisco, graduate with distinction. Dr. John Soontorn Anderson. Dr. Taylor Lynn Antolik also receiving Master of Public Health degree. Dr. Juliana Marie Bailey. Dr. Caitlin Rose Barberitz. Dr. Nicole Baruch. Dr. Alex C. Bauer. Dr. Michael B. Dr. Evan James Beacom. Dr. Nicholas M. Boudry hooded by Dr. Michael Boudry. Dr. Benjamin James Becker. Dr. Liran Bendor. Dr. Brian E. Berg, hooded by Dr. David Berg. Dr. Justin P. Berg. Dr. Allison Noel Block. Dr. Matthew Basie. Dr. Sampson Quabina Boham. Dr. Luke Andrew Botting. Dr. Vincent Boyd. Dr. Crystal D. Braden. Dr. Michelle Eileen Brown. Dr. Zachary G. Byard. Dr. Cade Call. Dr. Tucker Carlson. Dr. Sarah Cartwright. Dr. Andrew Chang.
Dr. Blake S. Chapman. Dr. Michelle Y. Cho. Dr. Jenna H. Choi. Dr. Angela Chuda. Dr. Justin Clark. Dr. Kinsey A. Cornick. Dr. Jennifer Lynn Cullison. Dr. Jesse Woods Dalton. Dr. Christopher T. Davidson. Dr. Michael Jimmy Davis. Dr. Ann J. DeBartolo. Dr. Luke Desolet. Dr. Christopher C. Dickinson. Dr. Kristen T. DeJoya. Dr. Derek B. Douglas. Dr. Bhuvana Dururaj. Dr. Bryn Emily Ehlers. Dr. Kevin Thomas Ehlers, also receiving Master of Science in Biomedical Sciences. Dr. Tyler Faber. Dr. Samantha Fee. Dr. Peter William Fisher. Dr. Abby Nicole Flanagan. Dr. Kyle Flickema. Dr. Abby Nicole Fredrickson. Dr. Landon Frost. Dr. Iswarda Ganapathi Raju. Dr. Michael Douglas Gedstead. Dr. Zach Geiger. Dr. Joel Gieswein. Dr. Christopher Gilbertson. Dr. Caitlin Lee Gillespie. Dr. Christopher J. Gerardo. (laughs) 
Dr. Andrew P. Glagoza. Dr. Rohith Ryan Goyle. Dr. Jeremy Great. Dr. Adam M. Gray. Dr. Brandon Grosshart. Dr. Paul Richard Guzik. Dr. Daniel J. Halma. Dr. Brian Alexander Handel. Dr. Joshua S. Harris. Dr. Mohammed Hassan. Dr. Christopher Hauglid. Dr. Craig Robert Herman. Dr. Cody Howe, also receiving Master of Science in Anatomy. Dr. Hannah R. Hurst. Dr. Zachary Illig. Dr. Kyle S. Joshin. Dr. Brianna Nicole Johnson. Dr. Cameron David Johnson. Dr. Douglas Mack Jones. Dr. Bryce Allen Jorgensen. Dr. Reshma D. Joshi. Dr. Alan Julius. Dr. Jonathan Calavang. Dr. Joshua Camareth. Dr. Samuel Katz. Dr. Kimball Kaufman. Dr. Daniel S. Kinker. Dr. Shane Kierkegaard. Dr. Megan Rose Kittleson.
Dr. David Koenig. Dr. Rebecca Lynn Koresh. Dr. Katie Kress. Dr. Nicole Annette Krolak. Dr. Elizabeth Kunyaman. Dr. Samuel L. Lampy. Dr. Sarah Jane Langenfeld. Dr. Cassandra Marie Lanning. Dr. Sun Lee. Dr. Stephanie Leeds. Dr. Megan K. Lemkul, hooded by Dr. Ben Lemkul. Dr. John Robert Leister. Dr. Devin Whittington Lenhart. Dr. Xiaolong Li. Dr. Bryant Zollinger Loosley. Dr. Selena May Lousy. Dr. Diana Liu. Dr. Asha Jaya Mada. Dr. Jenna Margulis. Dr. Osvaldo Martinez. Dr. Taylor Michael McCullough. Dr. Philip Henry McCarthy, also receiving Master of Public Health degree. Dr. Tyson Reed McKechnie. Dr. Scott A. Meteor. Dr. Brandon J. Miller. Dr. Kazine Cyrus Modi. Dr. Vijay R. Mohan. Dr. Tamra Julius Mosesyan. Dr. Lori Wylin Moy. Dr. Jillian M. Murray. Dr. Paul Myers.
Dr. Corinne Kalmus Nelson. Dr. Whitney L. Nelson. Dr. Nathaniel T. Nielsen. Dr. Michael David Nordquist. Dr. Timothy Nikowski. Dr. Thomas Olesnik. Dr. Jason H. Parvez. Dr. Rhea Patel. Dr. Michael James Patton. Dr. Alexander Pavandi. Dr. Julia Eve Peterson. Dr. Lindsay Renee Pogi. Dr. Zachary Daniel Prefer. Dr. Joseph Christopher Presson. Dr. Catherine Prow. Dr. Mignon Rademan. Dr. Kristen Lynn Randa. Dr. Brian P. Reedy. Dr. Michael Dominic Renickel. Dr. Noah Reynolds. Dr. Jared Lee Rietveld. Dr. Julie Elise Reisinger. Dr. Tara Robert. Dr. Stephen J. Rose. Dr. Chantel Julita Rasmus. Dr. Christian David Reiser. Dr. Jenna Schirmerhorn. Dr. Blaine M. Schlavin. Dr. Christina A. Carbia Schneider. Dr. Andrew C. Schrader. Dr. Katie Schwalbe. Dr. Andrew E. Schwinn. Dr. Kyle M. Skazavava. Dr. Sharice Shamirian.
Dr. Nipun Sharma. Dr. Marshall Shaidi. Dr. David T. Shin. Dr. Aaron C. Shoskis. Dr. Nikut Siddiq. Dr. Michaela Louise Simmons. Dr. Megan Kathleen Elizabeth Simpson. Dr. Sukhvir Singh. Dr. Jamie Christine Sklinov. Dr. Allison M. Smith. Dr. Noe De Jesus Sorinano. Dr. Wasim Jamal Sous. Dr. Nathan J. Spencer. Dr. Martin Andrew Spees. Dr. Christina Stan. Dr. Christopher Kenneth Stefan. Dr. Abby Jo Stroh. Dr. Brandon William Tempty. Dr. Derek T. Tessman. Dr. Hannah Caroline Pierce Thompson. Dr. Daniel Thorstenson. Dr. Blair Tilkins. Dr. Svetliana Toradova. Dr. T.J. Tolman, hooded by Dr. Mont Tolman. Dr. Morgan Lee Torres. Dr. Evan Toyoka. Dr. Dominic D. Tran Nguyen. Dr. Aaron James Troutman. Dr. Nathaniel Troll. Dr. Stephen V. Turner. Dr. Tiffany Nicole Turner. Dr. Ushruf Arman Udin. Dr. Daniel Van Kalsbeek.
Dr. Ryan Steven Van de Zand. Dr. Brian Vo. Dr. Whitney Vong. Dr. Jonathan Wadley. Dr. Michael James Wadley also receiving a Master of Science in Anatomy. Dr. Keel Wally. Dr. Samuel R. Walther. Dr. Emily Elise Whistler. Dr. Jesse Joseph Wilson. Dr. Allison Rose Winter. Dr. Zachariah L. Wittenberg. Dr. Eric W. Wood. Dr. Brian Paul Winia. Dr. Tungling Jesse Ren. Dr. Rabia Zahid. Our final graduates in the class of 2018 for the College of Osteopathic Medicine are the fellows in osteopathic manual medicine. They have spent one additional year training current students in the art and science of osteopathic manual medicine. Dr. Ashley Bidi. Dr. Mark Braden. Dr. Kimberly Miller. Dr. Molly Paris Rupti. The osteopathic oath will be administered by Dr. Jennifer Lateral, Associate Dean of Clinical Affairs and a member of the class of 2005. Will the graduates receiving the Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine degree please stand? Good morning. Will the osteopathic class of 2018 please join me as we read together the osteopathic oath. I do hereby affirm my loyalty to the profession I am about to enter. I will be mindful always to my great responsibility to preserve the health and the life of my patients, to retain their respect both as a physician and a friend, who will guard their secrets with scrupulous honor and fidelity to perform faithfully 
my professional duties to employ only those recognized methods of treatment consistent with good judgment and with my skill and ability, keeping in mind always nature's laws and the body's inherent capacity for recovery. I will ever be vigilant in aiding in the general welfare of the community, sustaining its laws and institutions, not engaging in those practices which will in any way bring shame or discredit upon myself or my profession. I will give no drugs for deadly purposes to any person, though it may be asked of me. I will endeavor to work in accord with my colleagues in a spirit of progressive cooperation and never by work or by act cast imputations upon them or their rightful practices. I will look with respect and esteem upon all those who have taught me my art. To my college, I will be loyal and strive always for its best interests and for the interests of the students who will come after me. I will be ever alert to further the application of basic biologic truths to the healing arts and develop the principles of osteopathy, which were first enunciated by Andrew Taylor Still. Please be seated. It is now my pleasure to introduce the president of the Alumni Association for Des Moines University, Dr. Sanford D. Zelnick. Dr. Zelnick received his DO degree in 1980. Dr. Zelnick. Dear graduates and newly qualified alumni of Des Moines University, this ceremony is always impressive and special, just as I had the privilege of walking across the stage in 1980, today you experienced the singular pride and accomplishment that comes with earning a professional degree. You now hold the key to changing not only your life, but as health providers and professionals to changing the world, one patient at a time or one community at a time. As you fulfill your highest individual hopes, please also remember our common connection as alumni of this great institution and our relationship as ongoing partners in the success of Des Moines University. Congratulations to all of you. At this point in our celebration, it is befitting for the graduates to pay tribute to those who have contributed greatly to their success. Will the graduates please rise? Through great dedication and commitment, the members of your esteemed faculty have advanced your capacities as caring and compassionate health professionals, scientists, and administrators. And as you go forward, you too have a responsibility to wisely use what you have learned to preserve and enhance the quality of life for those individuals and communities you serve. I ask you to demonstrate your appreciation by applauding the faculty seated in the front rows and on the stage. <clears throat> Graduates, to your parents, partners, loved ones, friends, and supporters, people who have cheered you throughout every step of this journey, I ask you to turn and face the audience. This is your opportunity to say thanks. On behalf of the administration, faculty, and staff at Des Moines University, we commend each of you on achieving this significant milestone.
And now the charge. To the members of the class of 2018, this day is a special day of celebration, achievement, and challenge. We ce celebrate your successful completion of the requirements for the Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine, Doctor of Podiatric Medicine, Doctor of Physical Therapy, Master of Science in Anatomy, Master of Science in Biomedical Sciences, Master of Science in Physician Assistant Studies, Master of Public Health, and Master of Healthcare Administration. This is an important milestone, and we celebrate it with you. It is also a day when we acknowledge your achievement of a body of knowledge and a set of special skills with which you can now go forth to render special service to improve the health and health care of our state, our nation, and the world. It is a day of challenge, since now many of you must commit to those important next steps that will complete your preparation and training that will confer upon you the eligibility to use your skills as a fully qualified professional in your chosen area of endeavor. These are challenges that you have shown yourselves ready to assume and to master. We extend our congratulations to you and to your families and loved ones. We share in the pride you feel in your accomplishments, and we are as, as excited as they are about the service you will render and the difference you will make. What an exciting and rewarding future that lies ahead of you. A favorite quote of mine is, know that you will make your living by what you get, but you will make a life by what you give. Go and serve. Commit to your part in fulfilling our noble mission in the delivery of medical care, in the advancement of knowledge, and in strengthening our system of health care. Reach far. Dream colossal dreams. Set audacious goals. Be bold in leadership, and in the name of service to mankind, be possessed of an outrageous ambition to make things better. That is your legacy. The service that you give is partial payment on the investment made by others in you. I therefore charge you to relentlessly pursue knowledge, seek wisdom, give service, and demand excellence throughout your lifetime. I charge you to fulfill the promise of being health professionals committed first to service for our nation's rural and underserved citizens with a dedication to prevention, wellness, and the delivery of compassionate, patient-centered care. I charge you to maintain respect for others and to cherish those who have been your greatest champions. Remember that professional integrity is essential to your success as a healthcare professional. So I charge you to also embrace the values of honesty, accountability, collaboration, and inclusiveness as the basic tenets of integrity. I charge you to be honorable and supportive alumni of Des Moines University. See this as an imperative to invest in the next generation of healthcare professionals. I charge you to lead, to inspire, and to serve and be always assured of our enormous pride in you. Congratulations. Dream big. Focus your knowledge, energy, and passion on improving the quality of life for all people. At, at this time, I'm now pleased to ask the Grand Marshal to step to the podium for the final pronouncements of this ceremony. Congratulations, class of 2018. These proceedings are now officially concluded. Guests, please remain seated until the recessional is completed. Families and friends, you are all invited to greet the graduates to my left in the atrium outside the doorway of this hall. Will the platform party, faculty and graduates, please rise for the recessional.
Thank you.